Hello and welcome to the Scratch Coding class. So in today's video we're going to be continuing with the beginner's guide to Scratch and if you haven't already make sure to subscribe to the channel and let's get started. So today is lesson 5 and here are our goals below. So we're going to understand touching blocks and operator blocks and the timer function and we're going to use different effects on sprites and then um, we're going to be able to customize your own sprites and backdrops and then at the end we're going to create a simple maze and there are also going to be lots of programming challenges on the way. So let's get started. Okay, so if you did not check out the last video with the Miles quiz, make sure to do so, but we're going to get started now. So basically, um, we're going to start with the touching blocks. So if um, the sprite is touching the mouse pointer, then this condition will be true. And this is a condition block, so you want to use it with the if command right here. So if it is touching the mouse pointer, then the condition will be true, else it will be false. And then you've got edge. So basically, the edge is basically like the very edge of the backdrop. So if it's touching that, then the condition will be true. And then you can have other sprites as well, so if it's touching another sprite. And we're going to move on to this block, it's very similar, so basically if it's touching um, a colour, a certain colour, and you can click on that and then you can adjust whatever colour you want. Or if you don't really know the values of each of, um, each of these um, parts, then you can just click on this bottom icon, you can just um, drag it around the backdrop and just click on whatever colour you want, and then you can choose that. And basically, um, if like the saturation is just one right there, then the condition will be false. It has to be very, very exact. So it has to be zero, zero, a hundred for this condition to be true. And um, moving on, we've got this block. We're not going to be using it. I have rarely used this block, but if a color is touching another color, then the condition is true. So again, we're not using that today. Just you don't have to worry too much about that one. And we are going to move on to look at some operators. So in the last video, we did a Miles quiz. So I'm going to explain some of these um, functions that we didn't get to use um, in the last video. So basically, we've got a greater than function. So if a value right here is greater than this value, condition will be true. This one works the exact same, but if this value is less than this value, the condition will be true. And then we also looked at this equals. Um, last time so if they're both equal condition is true and i just want to demonstrate the touching blocks before we move on to our first programming challenge today so we got a wing flag click we want to wait one second we are going to do an if condition if the sprite is basically touching our mouse pointer it's going to say hello for two seconds if it doesn't it's not going to do anything so we're going to test this out there we go it said hello and we're going to do it again and it didn't do anything because my mouse pointer did not touch the sprite. Perfect. And just be aware that the mouse pointer is like the very, very top of the mouse. So uh, my mouse pointer um, is quite big, but it's just like the very, very top of it, that corner at the top. And we are going to start our first programming challenge. So basically, for this challenge, I want you to create a script that makes the sprite move right while the mouse pointer is touching it, but move left if the mouse pointer is not touching it. And you want the first two blocks of your script to be like this, and you also want a forever loop. So just think about it, pause the video, and I'll tell you the answer in a few seconds. Okay, so the answer for this um, challenge is basically you want to use something like this. So when green flag clicked, um, coordinates forever loop, and then inside you want an if then else condition. So if it is touching the mouse pointer, then that means it will move one step. Or you can use a change x by one else set that as well because that will work so just change x by one and if it is false then you want to move minus one steps or change x by minus one and uh, you can adjust the value if you want to make it move faster but that is you have to have sort of these blocks um for the programming challenge to work so we're going to just test this out right now so i should probably remove um that script right there so here we go so there we go it says hello as well because I forgot to delete the last script but basically my mouse pointer is not touching it so it's going to move left and if it is it's going to move right so that's absolutely perfect and that is the first programming challenge done and um, what I'm going to do now is I basically um, want to move on to look at the timer block and this block has very interesting properties with it so basically the timer is basically almost like a stop clock clock i don't know why they call it a timer because um in the timer the value would decrease but in scratch then um, the timer starts on zero and increases so it's almost like a stopwatch and basically as you can see the timer is just keep ticking up and you can show the timer by just clicking 
on this um, box right here and basically um, when I start a new script that the timer just resets back to zero and it just keeps going up and up and up so you can use this um, for very interesting properties um, so we can use this instead of a wait block you can actually just use the timer and this is what our next programming challenge is going to be about so I want to, to choose a new sprite and choose the one um, beside the earth so this one right here and then you want to go into it and basically there are going to be um, some costumes right here so um, we'll just start with A right here I'm going to show it so you can see it and basically I want you to create a script that uses the exact same um, sort of um, function as this script but you, this time you want to use the timer block and not the wait block so have a think about this one and just pause the video and I'll give you the answer okay so the answer for this one is basically like this so green flag clicked and you want a loop and then if the timer is greater than zero then it's just gonna stay empty however if the timer is greater than five then it will switch the costume so that's after five seconds and then if the timer is greater than 10 it will switch to the final costume and there is um, isn't a D costume it only goes up to C so we are gonna test this right now um, so I probably want to reset the timer um, to start off with so we're gonna start now so there we go nothing and then costume B appears and we have to wait a few more seconds then costume C appears and that is basically the programming challenge complete so well done if you got that that is actually quite difficult and now we, go we are going to look at some effects of sprites and this is where things get quite fun so basically what you want to do for this is um, you want to go into the looks and here we have um, a bunch um, of different effects if you use these two blocks then you can see here you have seven different effects to experiment with I'm not going to go over every single one in this video because that's up to you to try yourself but basically you can set an effect to a certain value using this so it's almost like a variable but this time it's just with an, um, an effect and basically the effect zero means it has absolutely nothing and then you can change it or decrease it and that will work and then moving um, moving on um, for this we have this block and this basically clears every single effect on the screen so it just clears all of it and just makes this right normal again and um, now we're going to move on to our next programming challenge and this is the final one before we create the maze and basically I want you to create a script that waits for one second and then chooses one random effect to set the fifth day for two seconds before clearing all the effects and the first few blocks of the script is shown below so the hint is you really want a variable for this so pause the video have a think okay so basically for this um, what you want is green flag click wait one second and then you've got um, a variable that sets to random value from one to seven and for each um, number so one two three four five six seven you have a different effect to set to 50 um, so I've just done it in the order that Scratch has given it and then we wait for two seconds and then we clear all the effects so I want to test this out right now so there we go it chose the ghost effect and then it cleared it perfect and now I'm going to click on it again and it might choose a different effect no it's just the ghost effect again yeah so it, it is just choosing the ghost effect a lot for some reason because I'm just always getting seven so there I'm always getting seven right here and now we are going to um, move on to look at customizing your own sprite on scratch and we're not going to uh, dive too deep into this today but i just want to cover the basics of it um, for when we're creating the maze so to make your own sprite what you want to do is choose a sprite and then you want to click on this one that's paint and then this um, will, thing will sort of come up right here and you can do a lot of stuff with it there's two different modes there's bitmap and vector so make sure you stay in vector for today and we will look at bitmap probably in another video um so basically and um, we've got um a zoom button right here so you can just zoom in and out if you want to see the sprite a bit better and sort of this marker it means it's the center of the sprite so that's very helpful and basically you can do a lot of stuff you can use this paint function and you can change the color right here and then you can just basically draw whatever you want on it and just to um, erase it you can press ctrl z and it undoes everything and then we've got this erase block which basically just let's say if i draw something 
then the raised block will just erase it like that and you can adjust the thickness of both the pen and the razor by using this function right here. So um, we've got this next one, I'm not going to worry too much about that one today. This one is text and we're not, we probably might use it, I don't know, but basically if you click on it then you can make some text. And here we have um, a line and you can draw just a straight line instead of just painting like a very straight line right there. And if you want to do like a um, like a, a right angle line um, like that then you have to hold shift and then you can choose um, something like that to make a right angle. And here you have a circle and if you want to, to hold shift you get a perfect circle but if you don't hold shift you'll get an oval almost so something like that. And um, there is a fill, so that means whatever is inside the circle, and then outline is basically the line that's marking the circle. And then you've got a square, again, if you just hold shift while you're drawing a square, um, then that will be perfect. But if you don't, it will be a rectangle, so just keep that in mind. And now we're going to move on to programming the maze. Okay, so for this maze, basically, um, you want to create your own maze um, by the backdrop. You can maybe download one off Google or something, but um, I want to create my own maze today. So we are going to use everything 0, 100, 0, just to keep um, everything very easy to understand. And I'm probably going to make the lines about uh, maybe 5 thick. And basically, I'm just going to create my own maze. And the thing with a maze is you want to leave enough um, good space between the lines. So like this, um, you want to leave sort of enough space. If you do the lines too close, then that means the sprite cannot get in through the lines. So keep in mind, you might want to actually create a sprite first before you create the maze, but I'm going to do a very simple maze. You probably want to make it a bit more complex than what I'm doing now. So I'm just going to do a really, really um, simple maze like this. Okay, so that is my maze, it isn't really challenging, so um, you want to maybe make that a bit more challenging. And basically what we're going to do now is we want to create a sprite that's going to make through the maze. So for this, I actually probably want to do a circle, so we can probably do that. And I think that is quite a good size. You want to maybe drag it along, make sure it can fit through everything. And I don't want it black because um, the lines are black, so I want to do it red. So... Um, we can make this red right here and that was the outline I need to fill it red as well there we go so everything is at 100 now and I don't know why that hasn't filled there we go so and um, we just need to create a new circle and basically now if it touches um, the, the blank line we can control something to happen but before we do that we need to control the movement of the sprite and that is going to be done using the arrow keys so um, I probably want to actually adjust the size, make it a wee bit smaller. So we can use the arrow keys um, to control the movement by using the following script. And you kind of want to memorize this script because you'd be using it quite a lot. So when we if I clicked, and then we'll use a forever. And then what we want to do is we're going to have four if conditions. So I'm going to do the first one. So we're going to do a if um, key space pressed and it's not space. We actually want to change it to the arrows. So we'll do left arrow first and this block basically if you click on a certain key then the condition will be true so it's almost like this block right here so similar function then what you want to do is you want to change the x value by a negative so let's say i change it by minus five and for this means i don't really think you need to move left but in case um, then we do and then what you want to do is you want to just duplicate it and then you've got a right arrow and then up and down arrows is basically just use the Y value now. So down and then up. And then you want to use this chain Y. Okay, so once you've done that, you can give it a, a test run. You probably want it to start at this position right here. So I'm going to get a go to X block and we're going to begin. And basically, when I click. Um, the arrow keys you'll be able to make it move and it, it right now it is going through the lines so that is sort of a problem so and i've done the right arrow key wrong so um this should actually be a positive five so i probably forgot to do that but now we can test as you can see we have a working um remote control for the sprite so we can fix the problem of it going through the lines right now so basically we need a touching block to solve that out so which is why I explained touching at the beginning of the video so we need a if so if 
and the sprite is touching a color black and it is this color black right here and I didn't click on it so we have to be very exact when doing this there we go we've got black right there and I probably might want to make sure that I have the correct um, black but I think it should be fine so if it's touching that color then basically we want it to move um, X by 5 so basically want to reverse what it's been doing so just minus 5 plus 5 is 0 so it's not going to move at all and that's what sort of we want um, if it is touching a line we don't want it to move towards the line we just want it to almost like point smack so change X by 5 that's just going to cancel out and it's just going to stay in the same spot so let's see if I try to move just right left I cannot go any uh, more left I'm just clicking the key as much as I can and it's not moving left so that is exactly what we want and then what we have to do is just duplicate this for the right arrow but instead of moving 5 we want to move it negative 5 so every time we go right now um, then we cannot move right if it's touching that colour there we go we can't move right so um, the, the same is for up and down so if touching um, a colour then you want to change the Y by 5 so basically you're reversing whatever you did before if it's touching a colour and then you want to duplicate it and change Y by minus 5 for the up arrow and now if I do this that means the whole script should be finished and the sprite cannot go past any of the lines as you can see right here and now we are going to uh, program a finished line so when it reaches the end of the maze then we can just say you win and that is probably going to be it for our maze today I'll tell you how you can improve on this yourself um, but basically um, we have um, to make a line and I'm going to use this one green so we do use a green line and I probably actually don't want an outline so if you don't want an outline at all you just click on this and that means there's zero outline and let me do that perfect so basically if it touches that color I can um, say you win and I'm just going to stop all the scripts and I'll teach you how to do that in a minute so basically you want a way um, if touching inside this forever loop that's probably the best way to do it so if touching the color green right here then um, let's say we just say you win and then we want to stop um, every single script in this case there is only one script so we just stop all using this block and you can't actually just break a forever loop using this block so if you just um, you can stop the script and then the forever loop will end so that is the other way instead of just clicking here that explained in like episode um, 2 I think so um, now we can test this out so we're just going to move see I cannot get past the lines then when I touch it it says you win and then that's it so that is our basically our maze and complete and um, to improve this maze what I'd recommend doing is create a time limit so basically uh, you can use timer or you can maybe use a variable if you know how to do that um, so um, ideally you want to try using the timer because haven't, we haven't really used that that much so it's um, just good to try stuff that you just learnt and also you can maybe make coins uh, along here so you just have to duplicate a bunch of sprites and then if it reaches a coin the um, score can increase by one and you maybe have like bad coins that if it touches one of those then the score decreases or maybe time decreases and I have done um, a maze actually in this channel before so you can check out um, it's called how to make an interesting maze on scratch and there's two parts to it so if you want to um, make a maze in more detail then you can look at that video but that is going to be it for today's video of the scratch coding class so hopefully you enjoyed this look at um, the sensing and operators blocks and the effects blocks today and um, if you did make sure to leave like and subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you in the next video bye for now